Hey guys, and welcome back to this little space on the inner tubes. If you don't know me or if you are new here, I'm Adeline Welch. So welcome here. So hopefully you were intrigued by this look. I certainly was before I created it because I actually was inspired by one of my favorite palettes and that is the Makeup Forever Artist One palette. And if you have this, then I'm excited for you because today I'm gonna to show you how to use this first row here. These are intended to be three looks. So this is one, this is two, and this is three. And they all have different names. So if you're like me and you kept this little pamphlet, it actually gives you ideas on how to use each row. So today, I'm going to show you how to do the chic look. Boom. So this is what we're going to do today. So the reason why I'm to do all this and why I'm going to tell you this is because I'm going to create an entire series. If you're anything like me, you have used your hard-earned money to buy beautiful makeup but then it kind of sits and gathers dust and you just look at it and you want to cry because it's so beautiful and you want to use it. Maybe you're lacking interest, or not, you're not lacking interest, you're lacking inspiration. It's like, ah, I'm kind of intimidated where to start. You're just overwhelmed by how many colors are in front of you. Like, which one should I put together? I don't know how to do it. The list goes on, am I right? This is just a fun personal project to do. Grab your palettes and then challenge yourself and just say, I'm gonna come up with a look per row. So that's what my whole series is gonna be about. If you're interested in following along on my little project of using all of my palettes, I'll have lots of videos to come. I'm super excited, this is just kind of the beginning. Stick around and I'll see you next time. What is up my homies? I'm starting out as a barefaced mama and I just wanted to add this little clip in today to let you know that I found a really good physical sunscreen instead of a chemical in case you're on the hunt for one. It is by Pharmacy. It is creamy. It goes under makeup. There's no white cast. It feels incredible. FYI, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start with the eyes today by priming them and also just kind of removing that discoloration so it doesn't fight with any of the eyeshadows. This is from MAC. It's a creamy eyeshadow. It's called a paint pot and it's in the shade Painterly and it is excellent. It's going to keep these gorgeous eyeshadows right here on until we remove them. I'm starting with the top shade right here. It's the lightest one in the entire palette and it's called Pearl. I'm going to use these Real Techniques brushes today. They are synthetic. They are super affordable. I got mine at Ulta, I think, or maybe Amazon. One of the two. <laughs> I can't remember anymore. But this one is great. I'm going to apply this shade all over the lid and also just generously all over the brow bone. I did find that it went on kind of fluffy like if that makes any sense <laughs> I thought I looked a little gnarly right here but you know it gets better and then I'm going to take this more compact brush that has a little bit of a edged taper in the center and I'm just focusing on the crease just kind of how the photo shows the chic look in the in the little pamphlet and also placing a little bit on the inner corner as well but just on the lid not not the actual crease if that makes sense. So see here, I'll, I'll put it in the crease, then the outer corner, and then the inner corner, and that's kind of it. It's a really, really soft color. And this one is called Taupe Gray. I actually looked up the names on Sephora's website because they're so good about adding details about products, so I always love to check there. Because if you know Makeup Forever, they always use numbers for everything for their products, and so I was curious, I was like, I wonder what if these are called anything. So. Yeah, I just thought that was really helpful. So pearl first and then taupe gray second. And at first I thought it looked weird, but I knew it would get better. So <laughs> I thought, you know what? I need to frame my eyebrows. So we're moving on. And I'm using one of my favorite brow products. This is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is a brow pomade. It's the dip brow. And it's one of the best shades I have found for myself. It's called Ash Brown. Because I'm one of those neutral skin types where I'm kind of in the middle between uh, yellow and pink, but I've I have been discovering lately that I lean a little bit more yellow But this shade is just really really great if I want my eyebrows to stand out more But still look like a, like you know the correct color for me So anyways moving back to the eyes now that I feel like they are framed properly I'm using that last shade which is black and it's called onyx and I am taking this skinny little eyeliner pencil, again from Real Techniques, and I am just carefully taking my time just pressing that pigment into the eye, and I'm just sticking to the lash line. And then when it comes to the outer corner, I am just giving myself a little bit of a wing, using the lower lash line as my guide. 
and then as I do each eye, I kind of look, sit back, and then look at what, how, you know, how things are going, and then I tweak them a little bit. So I kind of went back in one and made a little thicker after seeing how I did the second one, if that makes sense. And then you just kind of go from there. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it gives a really pretty effect. I've actually found that I really like eyeshadow for creating liner. So then we are going to do the face so that we can finish the bottom of the eyes because I like to do foundation then concealer and then do the bottom of the eyes if it's kind of been being smoked out. And I am using one of my absolute favorite <laughs> foundation brushes. This look on my face here is that I actually forgot to put moisturizer on after the sunscreen. So I kind of thought, oh shoot, you know, I already put the foundation on, but I forgot to put that moisture on there. Um, the sunscreen is really nice, but it definitely, I wouldn't recommend using it alone. And so what I did is I used Max Fix Plus and sprayed directly onto my brush to add some moisture because it has that glycerin in there and it really did help. And so my skin looked better. Then I'm going to actually use a corrector today. And this is the under eye brightening corrector from Becca. And it has that really nice peachy tone, which helps to cancel out those purpley blue tones in their under eye area. But this also acts as a brightener. So it just has that two in one effect that really, really helps. And I like to use it under my concealers. And so here you can kind of see how it's helping to correct those strong colors that I have under my poor mama under eyes and so I am just placing it with this touch-up brush that I love from Bobbi Brown and that was also the same brand from the uh, foundation brush that I used as well that I really really love so this is just a tiny miniature version of that and so I'm just lightly placing it where I need it and then just buffing it so I forgot to show a quick little clip here, but the concealer that I am using today here is Shape Tape in the shade Light Neutral. This concealer is really good for high coverage under the eye, and the reason why I wanted that today is because I am gonna be using a black liner all around my eye pretty much, and I rarely do this actually because it does tend to emphasize my under eye area, which is kind of a an area that's not my favorite on my face. It's you know, just one of those things where it's like meh, that's kind of a weaker area, and so I'm just taking a dampened beauty sponge and just pressing it into place, and I'm good to go. Then I'm moving on to adding some more of the dimension and color back into the face. So I'm using this Makeup Forever Pro Bronzer in the shade 20M or M20. <laughs> and I'm using one of my favorite brushes from them too, actually. It's super velvety, and it just does a great job of just blending things in really, really naturally and flawlessly. What I love about this bronzer is that it's a gel base as well, so it just never looks like makeup on the skin. It's not powdery at all. It's just undetectable other than just the actual color, so it's really great. I highly recommend it. I like to distribute the bronzer all over my face, but concentrating mostly on my cheeks. I like to even things out a bit just by putting them on my forehead, nose, and my neck. Then I'm actually doing something a little playful today. I'm using the blush from the Artist 2 palette, it looks like an eyeshadow. You can use it on, as an eyeshadow, but it's actually labeled as a blush. I, so I wanted to keep this tutorial as mostly makeup forever as like, you know, as many <laughs> of their products that I had. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to play with this. I'm going to just kind of step out of my box and use this, what I thought was just an eyeshadow. And I just used my finger and it worked out really well. It was really pretty. I think the more baby pink tone worked really well with the taupe and like pearly colors on the eye. And I felt like I was kind of intimidated at first because I thought, oh my gosh, this is so bright. But I think it worked really well and it blended pretty easily. And I just took my time and just patted it in until I was able to build to the intensity that I wanted. So I same so same thing with using highlighting today. I was like, you know, I really want to stick to these palettes. And so I went back to the first one, the first artist palette, and I used one of the other lighter shades from a different row. And I think it did a really good job. Again, it was really soft and subtle and I pulled it off, so it wasn't bad. Now we're going back into the eyes and we're using the taupe shade again. And I'm using that skinny liner pencil to line the under eye. I just kept the brush sideways and just built it until it was to the intensity that I wanted again. I think this is one of those areas, I mean, all of makeup was like this, but specifically the under eye, I feel like if you want to go smoky and blown out, go for it, you know, and try not to get eyeshadow in your eyes. <laughs> 
Then I'm using that same brush and I'm just using just the very, very tip of it to go back into the onyx shade. And I'm just focusing on pressing and then slightly rubbing that pigment into just my lash line only so that the black is just hugging my lash line and then it kind of gradates down into the taupe. And so I just press it in and I just take my time just bit by bit just in small little motions and then I'm wiggling it like that because I'm not trying to necessarily blow it out I'm just trying to kind of get it in between the eyelashes and also kind of smoothing it out at the same time as I go and then just like I did with the liner on the top I'm going back and forth between each eye and trying to even them out and then just make them meet up with the liner that is on the outer corner. Then I am taking a flat synthetic brush, brush again, a brook, and I am going in with the lightest shade and I am going to highlight the inner corners and I'm actually gonna go back in on the middle of the lid and I'm re-emphasizing that pearl in the center to bring, to, you know, just help it catch the light a little bit better because I feel like after applying the taupe everywhere and trying to buff it in nicely it got lost just a tiny bit and I wanted to kind of make it pop a little bit more again so there's just a little tip and I would say that going back and doing this this look again I would have actually done the taupe first yeah falsies and then I would have done the pearl after so oh there's my other lash these are actually the Ardell wispies they're one of my absolute favorites. They're so affordable and I feel like they really suit my eye shape and they're just not too much. They're not enough, you know? When I try ones that are less, I, they're just not, they just don't feel like me. So I don't know, I feel like these are a happy medium. And I wanted to leave in a couple of clips here to show you what I do. I wait until the glue is tacky and that is just my one of my best tips I could possibly express. And then I just place the inner corner and then the outer corner. So while that dries, I am going down to the lips and I am putting on the shade Aquarius from ColourPop, a, another very, very affordable brand. This is a really pretty shade and I feel like it matches the color of my lips really, really well. So it's just gonna help this gorgeous lip gloss pop a little bit more and just kind of give more definition to my lips. This shade is Celeste and I, it's like a peachy glitter and I adore it. So the <laughs> this is, me showing what the lashes look like with and without mascara. So the benefit of drugstore and being so affordable is that you can pile on that mascara as much as you want. And I always really press my natural lashes up into my falsies. And I'm using the, the tip of the wand to really make sure the ends of my natural lashes are um, up into the falsies and cohesive so they're not separate at all and that's one of the other things I do to make it look really natural so here's the final look you guys I really hope you like it and I hope it gave you some inspiration and ideas even if you don't have this palette it will show you what you can do with those kind of colors so have a wonderful day and I will catch you next time take care I actually have to record uh -oh. something really quick. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, all right.